Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and this is an Answer Questions episode. And also today is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there, and uh, hopefully this will be a good day for you guys. And, and let's get down to the question, shall we? Alright, John from South Sioux City, Nebraska, actually, sends out this one. Such noticeable features as Spinosaurus' sail, Dilophosaurus' crest, and Concavenator's hip are bony exaggerations. Features that nowadays exist on mammals. Could those features have been boys only fashion? You know, that's a good question, you know. What why are some features on dinosaurs actually uh, so distinctive like Spinosaurus' sail, Dilophosaurus's uh, crests on the, on its head, or otherwise concaving ears like a uh, weird hip extension of the spine, you know? What could have actually possibly have been those features for? You know, were they actually used for just for the male uh, male side of the species? Or otherwise, could they actually be in for all of them? You know, for both males and females. You know, you see, I don't see Spinosaurus females actually having that kind of actually, um, uh, the sexual dimorphism of terms of physical feature in terms of the of the sail. I would actually say they probably didn't have the crest on their head, you know, that probably would have probably would have been what the females probably didn't have. Is that they probably didn't have that crest right on the middle of this right in the middle of its head. You know, because there's that distingu distinguished uh, crest right in between its eyes. And so I would probably say that that it probably didn't actually, probably females didn't have that. I'd say both males and females had the sail. It's just that the males probably had the crust, had the crest on, in between the eyes, and the females probably didn't. And so that's probably what I think might have happened with Spinosaurus. Now with Dilophosaurus, I do see what you're coming from there. I do believe that Dilophosaurus males probably had the larger crests on their heads, whereas females probably had smaller smaller crests but probably didn't use them for for like a uh, sexual identification or anything it's sexual or not sexual identification probably uh, sexual um, advertising ways you know probably just probably just uh, show the males that hey this is I'm a female da, 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 that kind of stuff with concavenator I do like what you're coming from there I like that idea I do believe that concavenator, concavenator males probably had that uh, ex expansion of spines right in between the hips. And that would probably be for, for display to the females, and I would not be surprised if that was colorful and probably would have been had, would have had feathers right there. Now with some other kind of dinosaurs that have probably had that, st dis that distinguishing feature, uh, I would probably say that Ceratosaurus probably would have, probably Ceratosaurus females would have probably had smaller uh, crests on its nose and the eyes, whereas the males probably have more pointy ones and more more broadly extended ones, you know, probably to uh, say, probably to know which one's a male and which one's female. But some dinosaurs are very hard to identify what could be male and what could be female. Like with Tyrannosaurus rex, for example, we don't know uh, what the sexual dimorphism it would have been for Tyrannosaurus rex. Would females be larger than the males, or would the males be larger than the females? I mean, we still don't know about that. But even though we can identify a female uh, Tyrannosaur by that, by just by looking inside the bones, and uh, basically in the femur, and we can actually distinguish that with the abnormal gro bone growth uh, inside the femur for basically to show that the female is about to ready is ready to lay eggs that's pretty much how it goes now I would say that Spinosaurus with Spinosaurus uh, sale I would say both males and females had it like I said before it's I, I would probably say that the females probably didn't have the crest uh, in between the eyes that's probably that's probably my my belief. What female spinosaurus probably did not have compared to the males. And I would say males would probably be the larger uh, species of would probably be the larger members of spinosaurus, larger sec, sexual orientation of the dinos of that kind of dinosaur. And uh, the Lophosaurus, I do believe that 
males would be larger than the ma males would be larger than the females, considering that with the larger crest size, you probably need to actually have a bigger head, and also you probably um, need a lot of muscle attachments uh, for uh, to keep your head up. And so, but even though the the crests on Dilophosaurus are very thin, but even though I would still say they need large, they need uh, pretty strong neck muscles uh, for them to keep their head up. And so, males would probably be the stronger uh, members of the species. And then with Concavenator, I would actually say that probably males and females would probably be the same size. It's just that I would probably say that the females didn't have that much of a of like a little bit of a hump uh, over their over their hips. I'd probably say they had a little bit of a smaller one. Or otherwise, they just had some sort of uh, feather plumage right there, but not as colorful as the males. So that's probably my guess of the sexual dimorphism of some of those dinosaurs. And I mean, with Carnotaurus, I mean, that's kind of almost the same way. When males have those larger horns over its eyes, and then basically the females probably had smaller ones, but probably were not used, probably not used for combat, combat that much. I mean, it's still up in the air, and we still don't know about dinosaur sexual dimorphism. And so that's really going to be a challenging part of paleontology in terms of dinosaur paleontology, is that we won't know uh, what kind of, what, what distinguishes males from females in terms of dinosaurs in general, especially theropod dinosaurs. So, so I would still believe that Males would probably be more brightly colored than the females. Females would probably be dull in color. So i will probably say that um, there's probably some s s color uh, sexual dimorphism along with that. you know. But physical features, that's really tough. That's really, really hard to actually figure out. So, But even though, hey, it's still a, it's still a debating topic. So like, luckily you're actually kind of getting in. Luckily that that is actually an opportunity to look into is sexual dimorphism in dinosaurs. So we'll see where that goes. All right, that's it for now. And now next week will actually be a special episode. So uh, you can actually uh, tell me what kind of dinosaur or prehistoric mammal, or basically Cenozoic mammals, um, uh, sea monsters, or otherwise um, uh, pterosaurs, or, or some of the... Uh, some mammal-like reptiles in the Permian, uh, you know, any vertebrate uh, that you want me to talk about. I can just basically like that, but just only vertebrates of prehistoric life. That's all I'm looking for. And I'm mainly into dinosaurs, but even though I love Cenozoic mammals, and I also love uh, vertebrate sea monsters, and um, I do kind of like the other reptiles, like the crocodilians, uh, and some sort of species of fish, like some basically some shark, basically sharks are my kind of forte in terms of fish, and um, and some of the mammal-like reptiles, um, kind of like the Permian carnivorous ones, and uh, and with uh, reptiles, I, like I said, with cro crocodilians, and with birds, I like the terror birds because those are pretty cool, and those are the pretty cool birds, and to my opinion, and. Uh, but also, you can still send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or otherwise uh, on the Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Uh, like the page, and you can actually post any question on the comment section on any Facebook post. And remember to keep the questions short and to the point, and uh, you can get your question answered. And uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter at C S G R A L L. That's my Twitter page. Like, follow me there, and I post pretty cool stuff there. And also, make make sure to take care of the people around you. And also, for your younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education. With a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.